welcome to Studio to Studio. My name is Trista Seeliger, and my artist guest today is Sorel Reno Sway. Sorel Reno Sway is a painter, curator, a gallery director, and producer of contemporary public art. He's a lifelong Oakland and East Bay resident, born from two artists, Father Eugene, a visual artist, musician, and architect, and Mother Linda, a performing artist and modern dancer. Bridging the gap between art and business development, Sorel has embarked on a successful independent career in the local arts community. Beginning with Oakland-based La Qua Vive Gallery, Sorel's first gallery, promoting a strong mix of contemporary art, urban, and street art. La Qua Vive became the premier space for local artists to showcase their work and turn the corner from being vandals to being true professionals. After two years, La Qua Vive was rebranded and reopened as the Athen B Gallery. Sorel began producing large-scale murals and installations throughout the Bay Area, and specifically in his hometown of Oakland, having produced over 20 large-scale pieces in downtown Oakland alone. These works have become fixtures of Oakland's culture and artistic identity and forever changed the visual landscape of Oakland. Reorganized now as ABG Art Group, Sorrel has launched full force into art production, producing cutting edge public and private art installations that fuse artistic mediums, style and te technique. Honoring and advancing his own art practice, Sorrel has produced multiple installations of his own art, recently winning and completing the Chinatown CDC mural in San Francisco, a six story dual wall mural reflecting his own Asian heritage and contemporary artistic vision. So welcome Sorrel Reynos Way. Um, thanks for, for joining us. Um, so you're, you are a multi-passionate entrepreneur and artist. Can you list up all the, the different arms of your life as in art and as well in, in your businesses? Well, I think primarily I'm, I'm, a, I'm a painter, I'm a muralist, I'm an artist at, at heart. Uh, the core of my business is curation and art production and uh, project management and development uh, of art projects, you know, which is ABG Art Group. That's the company that I founded, um, which was an extension of Athen B Gallery, which was my gallery in downtown Oakland. And that morphed into ABG. So that's what the ABG stands for is Athen B Gallery. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's, that's really the main thing I do as a business is, you know, curate and produce projects in collaboration with artists, uh, working for a lot of different types of, of clients from private developers to city government to just people that want to do an art project, uh, architects, designers, uh, kind of the whole gamut of, of anybody that needs to produce artwork. So that, that's really the main thing that I do professionally. Artistically, um, I have a lot of kind of little sub ventures and things that I do um, just from music. I've got a little band and, you know, write and do, you know, poetry and stuff like that. Uh, and then I'm also involved in a uh, cannabis startup where I do branding, marketing concepts, um, development, um, and kind of vision casting um, for, for, for the brand. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's another part of my life. Um, most recently, you have been asked to fulfill a position for the city of Oakland as the first cultural strategist of public art. So yes. that just happened. So tell me about this position and why it, it's so important. Yeah, super excited about this position. Cult Cultural strategist in government for public art for the city of Oakland. It was a call they put out uh, a few months ago, maybe six months ago. Had a really extensive interview process. And uh, the, the, the job is to um, get a broader and more diverse range of artists to engage in public art opportunities that are city funded and, and beyond. But um, what they found historically is that there's a, a fairly small pool of artists that really apply to a lot of the city projects and then it's predominantly white men and so they want to you know engage younger artists artists of other mediums artists of different backgrounds and really get them into the fold mm -hmm. uh so that's a really important mission you know especially for a city like oakland i think it's it's a it's a really um something that really needs to happen and it and it really lends itself to my expertise because I've been doing exactly that 
um, you know, for the last decade plus. And, and the majority of projects that I've produced are with artists of color or with female artists, uh, about 85% um, total. It feels great to be able to take all the things that I've learned and apply it to something that uh, can help a lot of people and, and have a lasting um, impact on the arts community here in Oakland. Because the, 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 the position is to really design a, a, you know, a platform or a way to engage broader artists that, that has lasting power, right? Like, mm -hmm. obviously I can come in and you know, connect people and make things happen, but that's not really the job. The job is to like figure out how we're gonna long-term uh, make change in the pool of artists that engage with city projects. And so I feel like I have all this just kind of historical knowledge from all the books that I've done um, that I get to apply to this new platform. And, um, you know, it's a bit of like a legacy piece for me is kind of how I'm, I'm looking at it. Like, I feel really honored to, um, to be able to, you know, produce something like this that can help so many artists. And it's not, it's not very often where you get a job opportunity that really is like, oh yeah, that thing you've been doing for a long time that's hard to kind of communicate and translate, like mm -hmm. we're gonna hire you to really focus on that, you know? Like it, yeah. it feels great. It feels great to feel like, yeah, okay, I, I get to really apply this, um, this energy, this knowledge, this impactful work I've been doing um, to the future generations and, and leave something uh, for them. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. Looking at your career so far, you have done like 20 some odd murals with all these different artists in Oakland that are, maybe some of them are more established, some of them were less established, but you really have highlighted and focused your attention on these amazing artists. Like, so, and and I think you're, you know, you are bringing up people who have maybe like in, in the past not had the, the voice or the spotlight and you've done these incredible projects so far. So I'm really excited to see where you go with this, but like, tell me about the art scene in Oakland and, and why you see it, like why you have been able to, you know, you know, why do you see it as being so vibrant and cool and, and, and important and kind of one of the most exciting art scenes in the United States? Oakland's a really special place when it comes to art. You know, I, I think that, um, there's so many layers to it. I, I really, I, I think of Oakland as kind of in a way like has still has this wild, wild west kind of feel because it's not a highly regulated place for, for better and for worse uh, when it comes to art. And, and what I mean by that is like, when it, even if I just go to San Francisco, if you try to do a mural in San Francisco and you like, you know, bring a lift up on the sidewalk or whatever, you know, it's like, some ticket guy or some person's gonna come and kind of challenge your authority or, you know, wanna see your paperwork or whatever, you know, everything's really tightly regulated. Mm -hmm. And in Oakland, you just don't have that, you know, like uh, it's still a pretty wide open place in a lot of different ways, not just for art. I mean, I go down to the lake on the weekend, it's like people have, you know, parked their cars right up on the side of the of the grass because they're having a big drum circle. And it's like, nobody cares, you know, that the, the the police aren't tripping off stuff like that. They, they you know, they, it has its bad neighborhoods. And so they're dealing with other things that are more important, you know, and they, yeah. there's just this attitude that like, we're not going to trip off of little stuff that's kind of inconsequential. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you just don't get that in a lot of cities in America anymore. You know, like every, most of the places I go, it's like, it's pretty tightly regulated, mm -hmm. um, just how you move and navigate through the city. And so when you get into like, painting murals or doing art um, in, a, in a lot of places there's you know they're checking on you or it's like do you have the authority or did the arts commission sign off on this and in Oakland it's just like we're just making stuff happen and, and, and nobody really cares so I feel like that's opened the door for a lot of creative expression a lot of creative freedom uh, a lot of gung-ho just like let's do it. You know, I mean, my whole career producing stuff in Oakland, has just been like, yeah, let's do it. You know, like, I mean, we did so many projects with no permits, no nothing. You had a huge boom lift delivered, took over the whole street, no permits, just did it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and that's Oakland, you know, and, and I love that about Oakland. And I think that that creates this kind of openness and this energy that, uh, that gets it going. Um, and then I, I think the obvious things, you know, it's a very diverse place, obviously, culturally, there's just like so many peoples from so many different cultures. So you get this real, it is a real melting pot. It's not just like, 
the kind of fake melting pot it, it, it really is you know there's just like so many different cultures all throughout the city and historically it's been a place that um is is prominent for social movement you know social justice you know youth movement people really uprising from the occupy to black lives matter to you know all the recent stuff i mean and I think that energy kind of feeds art in a way, you know, like I think art is always um, a reflection of the times, a reflection of what people are going through. And, and I feel like Oakland has this special energy of just like people wanting to voice their opinion and 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 say it loud and, and demand justice and and do all these things. And so that that energy really feeds art. Yeah. And I, and I think also there's a there's an arts history here that I think is um, or there's a there is a level of infrastructure and support that um, is more internal, not not necessarily like city funded, but there's been organizations that historically like, you know, the whole Burning Man thing, like all the Burning Man artists were originally based in Oakland, you know, and they were producing all these pieces in the American Steel Building and, you know, this kind of historic arts place and uh, that helped a lot of artists the growth of burning man like created this huge amount of you know funding and 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 revenue for a lot of artists to explore uh, a lot of big things and so i think on the kind of larger scale fabrication side there's been like this this um kind of historical infrastructure do you want to name like shout out some of the artists that you've worked with so yeah, I've done like signature kind of large scale mural projects in downtown Oakland with uh, like Zio Ziegler, Heather Day, Jet Martinez, Pastel, Muse Cisse, uh, Cannon Dill, Josh Mays, Kelly Ording, um, Human, uh, Sinkyu Mubarak, Eric Otto, um, Chad Hasegawa, um, there's a there's a few. Yeah. No, it goes on, right? The, yeah, it goes yeah. it goes on and on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One thing that I really appreciate about you is that you have uh, you have worked in a lot of different mediums, and you do you're really curious about you know trying to make like you did you you've, you've worked in sculpture, you've worked with wood, you've done photography, and you've really tried to bring these big different you know different mediums into the space, and uh, I appreciate that. Um, you also yeah, coll collaboration, right? You know, collaboration I mean, that's the thing still. is just like knowing all these different artists that that have these different mediums. And, and then one thing that I've done well, I, I think, is, is having a bit of a like forward thinking, you know, visionary approach to what they do where it merges with the public, you know, because like a lot of artists are painters and muralists, but they don't think beyond, you know, what what what's something else I could do in the public sphere? That's kind of an, a, a a futuristic movement of my of my work in another medium, you know. And we did that with the with the sculpture relief with Jet Martinez, and we've mm -hmm. done some lighting stuff. And you know, it's um, yeah, it's it's like ha you know knowing the artist well and saying like Let, let's collaborate on something, mm -hmm. but what about this? What about that? You know, like I, I'm always thinking about reinterpreting their work in some other uh medium for the public uh, that makes sense and that's been an exciting process and and one that i think a lot of artists are um, always happy about you know like i think when you've been painting murals for 20 years you know you're you know the idea of, of doing it a different way or in a different medium uh is exciting because a lot what a lot of people don't know is that permanent public art which is most of the big the big funded projects have to be deemed permanent and murals are not considered permanent yeah and so if you're a muralist and you're going after one of these big like one percent you know public art projects that has a two hundred fifty thousand dollar budget a mural will never win uh, because it it's not deemed it, it can be painted over it can erode over time and so that's why these big projects always go to like sculptors and you know art artists that uh you know work in a medium that doesn't degrade and, and so I've tried to find ways in which muralists can kind of get into these other mediums uh, that are deemed permanent public art. And so that's something that we've uh, that's you know, so always tried to think forward yeah. Uh, about, yeah. 
Yeah, and it's one thing that people just don't, uh, as an artist, you don't necessarily know about these things. You, you know, your right. your focus is to work on your work and and think about um, what you're doing, and um, you know, you're not necessarily thinking about all these other structures that are out there. And that's that's one of the gifts that you have, which is that you're able, you've learned a lot, you've done a lot, you've worked with a lot of different people, you've worked with a lot of different materials, and then you're able to sort of synthesize all of this, and then and then help people who don't know all of this information, which you've gained over multi, like how many years have you been doing this? Mm, it's been about 12 years. I mean, it was a lot of time that I was just in the gallery, you know, I started in the gallery, um, you know, just doing exhibitions, doing shows. We're showing a lot of like, kind of like post graffiti artists, street artists. And so that, that kind of bled into like doing more kind of street art productions. And, and that's kind of how I started. But I have a, you know, a pretty like extensive business background. And I think that it just takes time. But I, I think like artists, uh, if you want to get into public art, if you want to do murals, you know, there is a real business element that you have to dive into and understand. And so it's not like you're saying, like most people just work on the work and they don't they don't grow in that business side of it because it's just not their their realm. And that's fine. You know, and, and often people can find people like me or some kind of manager to, to help them through it. But I think if you really want to go into that field, you, you've got to be ready to learn and adapt and grow your practice on the business side. You know, I always tell artists like you're an artist, like you are a business, you know, like every independent artist is a business. And so if you're going to be a business, then you have to take the business serious, you know, and you have to learn about the business, whether it's selling your work on Instagram or working with galleries or doing public art, whichever it is, it's still a business, you know? And so there's a certain amount of just business savvy and business knowledge that any artist wants needs to learn you know whatever your medium is i mean read business for dummies or you know take some some courses or whatever like whatever can help you understand but just don't be afraid of it don't be intimidated by it don't be like oh this business side is like killing me i'm like dealing with all this stuff these contracts i'm getting overwhelmed it's like i get it we've all been there but that's how you get better you know and that's how you get through learning about the business because you want to get to a point where you're really just like business art business art and you've got the business tight so you can really just focus on your your art like you just need to know you know there, there's money changing hands there's things happening it's like know about your business you know like i think that that's just really important for for any artist this all leads us to kind of the next uh question which is that you yourself are an artist as well so you do for this production and you promote and you're um, building and helping other people um, you're running your own business but you are you are actively um, making art and have an art practice so tell me about that yeah it's been such a journey <laughs> for me i mean um as you know my, my parents are artists uh, and my dad's uh, an architect illustrator so just growing up i was just drawing all the time drawing 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 with him and um and then just like didn't do anything from about 15 till I was about 30 <laughs> or 35. So um, <clears throat> it, it all kind of came back full circle for me when I started doing art productions and was in the and when I was in the gallery and just started working with so many amazing artists and just was like, fuck, man, I love this. You know, like what what have I been doing with my life? I've been chasing money and I need to just be, you know, making art and, and in the art field. And I think working with artists kind of pulled me in. And then when I started painting murals with them, that gave me a lot of confidence to be like, oh, I can do this, you know, and, and um, just started kind of assisting, but really grew into that to where they saw that I could paint and were like really, you know, working hand in hand with them painting, you know, executing these amazing murals. And, and that was really actually my, my main introduction to painting was like painting large murals with, you know, well-established artists. So I was very, very fortunate and lucky in that regard. Um, so I never painted as a kid. I only drew, you know, with pencil and, uh, but I could, I could draw, you know, I can, I can pull a line. I can, I can pull a brush. So I, I think painting the murals was really my like training ground and, and was just kind of doing that for years and years and, and then just started 
painting at home and and really um, diving into that and just figuring out what I wanted to do and just trying different things. And I had the luxury of, of working with so many amazing artists in different ways, you know, like you know, figurative and abstract and floral and, you know, all these different things. So I got to really just try different things and, and figure things out working with them and then just started doing it on my own. You know, finding your voice is, um, yeah. I, I think it's like you find your voice and then you change and yeah. Yeah, and you and the practice moves and you move and so work is always kind of changing or probably should be you don't want to continue to just do the same thing over and over again because right. art, art in a lot of ways is an intellectual practice you know so as you age and grow your your, your art's going to change tell me about the um, mural that you did in Chinatown yeah so yeah that's kind of where I was going with the story it was just like um painting with other people, getting comfortable painting, and then figuring out where I want to go with it, you know, what my artistic voice is and, and, and what that means. And I think that that process is still, I'm still undergoing that process, of course, like I think all artists are. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I think what I, what I found most connected to was just elements of my life and culture my Chinese culture that I've always like revered that artwork so much and the Chinese calligraphy and just the Chinese cultural styling is something that I've always been so personally drawn to. Mm -hmm. And so I just really started weaving that into my work and, and trying to find balance with um, kind of like Chinese imagery that, that I enjoyed, but like, to, you know, presenting it in a, in, a, in a contemporary way that felt true to me, that was kind of merging some abstraction and different layering and different processes. So tell me about the, the, the piece, tell me about um, the design. Yeah, so it started, um, I had a much more kind of like abstract <laughs> piece to begin with, because what I was doing at the time was like layering these kind of historical Chinese pattern works um, and making these kind of like fabric collages, if you will, um, that I was excited about. And so my original concept was like all these different kind of layers of Chinese patterns, um, which they liked, but it was too, it was too much, you know? So it was, they wanted, was it just too abstract for them or? I think it was too abstract and it was too busy, you know, and there were, there was kind of too much going on. It was still a bit too contemporary. I think they, they wanted it to be a bit more kind of universal. And so um, we focused in on one of the patterns, which was the kind of green flower one. And that was the, the one that they were um, enjoying the most. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the one of the kind of specific items that they needed in it was like, a, a, you know, a kind of historical Chinese landscape. And so it was a bit of a like, Desi not designed by committee, but there was a lot of influence from from the Chinatown mm -hmm. CDC in terms of what they needed out of the project, which was which is also kind of new for me because typically I'm very like centered on like this is the artist vision, this is what we're doing, you know, and this was a, a much more give and take kind of um, project. But it was a great exercise for me to kind of go through that and and um, make changes, make updates, change the design, give them what they needed, but still get out of it what I wanted to get out of it. And then um, that, how has that led to like your painting practice? Where I where I've landed on it was this this um, working of calligraphy into it. You know, I really love Chinese calligraphy, and I love how the characters work when they're done in that kind of artistic style. Mm -hmm. And so I've been developing this concept that's like abstracting Chinese calligraphy in a way mm -hmm. that. Um, feels Chinese, but it doesn't read Chinese. It's not literal calligraphy. It's it's taking pieces of the strokes and kind of composing them. And I, I really love um, like abstract pattern work, you know, like Retina or Aaron De La Cruz or, you know, guys like that, that kind of have these like stacked, you know, patterns. I mean, that's that's been a big inspiration for me. And so kind of taking this abstract Chinese calligraphy and 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 presenting it as this kind of pattern. Um, but the characters are actually taken from poems. So even though the pieces aren't legible, they do 
go in order and they do read through these poems. So there's kind of this historical element to it where it does trace back to this old poetry and these old calligraphy uh, pieces, but you can't, you can't read it through the piece because it, it doesn't translate that well. And that, and that feels very true to me because it's like, I feel that culture. I just feel it, you know, and I, and I, and I, and I love it. Uh, but I don't live it every day and I don't read the language, you know, so it's just more of a feeling. And so the the work I feel like embodies that is it's just a feeling, you know, it feels Chinese, but it's not hitting you over the head with this this literal Chinese imagery. So yeah. that's that's the balance that I was really kind of going for. And, and mm -hmm. that's what I um, I feel really good at kind of landing in that spot. I'm like, OK, yeah, this has been like this maturation of my work and and where I really want to go with it. Well, I think it brings together abstraction, um, express, uh, expressive uh, hand movements, mm -hmm. um, your culture, uh, the work you've been doing for the last 12 years. Uh, so it's like this great combination of uh, things that are beginning to coalesce into what you're making. Assign us an art assignment. Um, so this art assignment is, uh, based on your practice and your experience um, that would push um, our creative skills using the mediums of your choice. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like the question I get all the time from kind of like emerging artists is like, I want to do a mural. How do I do a mural, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, such a broad <laughs> question to answer, but yeah. I think for, uh, for this art assignment, um, I'd love to just lay the framework for like how to approach like doing your first mural, you know, and I think obviously for the seasoned artist watching, this is not for you, but <laughs> for, for all those painters that uh, are like, I really want to do a mural. Um, this is the advice I would give. I think um, first you got to just um, start at the bottom, you know, like understand that like you haven't done a mural. So as much as you want to paint this 10 story building, you're not gonna start with like a 10 story building, you know? So be realistic and use your own network and your own resources to find a site that might actually be open to you painting a mural. And that's gonna be like your neighbor's fence or like the liquor store on the corner or, you know, some random little building that people aren't tripping off, you know? And like use that opportunity to, uh, to get going, you know? And so uh, I think the steps to making that happen are, are pretty simple, but, but you have to um, package your work, you know, in, in, a, in a digestible way that can be sent around without you. And I think a lot of artists that are like, uh, yeah, I went and talked to this, this um, you know, this building owner. Uh, or the, I went to this store and they love my work. I showed them my Instagram and, and they want, and they're down for me to paint a building. They just got to talk to the owner. The owner of the building is the one who's really going to make the decision. And it's mm -hmm. not always so easy to get an audience with the owner. And then I think that's where a lot of people kind of mess up is like, they talk to a tenant and the tenant's excited and they're like, yeah, I'm going to do this mural. And then they just don't hear anything for like a month. And it's because the tenant doesn't actually make the decision. It's the owner. Mm -hmm. And the owner is probably over 60 and isn't on Instagram. <laughs> so you've got to package your work in a way that can get to the owner. And so what do I mean? Make a very simple PDF, you know, just have like, you know, Keynote or Google Slides or whatever, just make a, a quick little slide deck that has like, you don't have to put a full bio, but just like, uh, you know, an artist, quick little statement about your work and just make it visual heavy. Show paintings, show, you know, do three, four, five slides of your work. Don't do 20, don't overwhelm, just give them a few little chunks of your work. Mm -hmm. And if you can do a mock-up on the site, do that. Because I think people are very um, visually oriented and it's hard for them to imagine what it's gonna look like unless you just show them what it's gonna look like. Mm -hmm. So your name, you know, you can put your, your Instagram and whatever, whatever. And when you talk to the tenant, get their email and then you email that to them because that is what they're gonna to send to the owner. 
-hmm. Like you have to have it in a packageable way so that it can get sent around to the owner, the owner's lawyer, the owner's family that might want to take a look at it, you know, and these are, you can't just always say, oh, there's my Instagram, let me paint a mural. You know, like you've got to get it into a format that people that aren't on Instagram can digest and make a decision on whether or not you want to do that and go from there, you know, and, and start small. Like I said, like it, it's a process, get a couple under your belt, construction sites that have the boards. Those are usually easy, you know, small little buildings that are kind of dilapidated um, people, you know, you know, just use your network to find a site package your work, get it to the ownership, get them to sign off on it and go from there. What's next for you? What's going to be happening in the next, like, is there anything coming up that's the next big thing? Yeah, I got a couple big projects um, in Oakland and San Leandro around the Bay Area, uh, just like big mural projects, big installation projects, um, big ground murals, um, some stuff that's more installation based, um, some lighting and, and fabrication stuff that I'm excited about. And um, just uh, more of my own work, you know, I'm really digging into my, um, my kind of abstract calligraphy um, thing. And I've got some some commissions and stuff coming up that I can't talk about yet. But um, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for my own kind of personal growth and uh, various projects around the Bay Area that'll that'll be popping up. Well, thank you so yeah. much for doing the interview. Yeah, it's been great. It's always yeah. good to talk shop with cousin Trissy. That's <laughs> <laughs> what we do. We'll continue to follow you on Instagram and see what you're up to. And I can't, I can't wait to see what's coming up in the next year. Awesome. Thanks so much. I appreciate okay. it.